Today, inshallah, we're going to go over 10 techniques that are explicitly mentioned in the Quran that shaitan uses to call us to commit sins. The first of them is the one that actually is so trivial that Allah Azza wa Jal has lifted from us the sin when shaitan does it. And that is the tactic of distracting us to the point of causing us to forget. Time to pray. Asr is going. You say, khalas, I'll pray inshallah, no problem. And then next thing you know, Asr is gone. And you have forgotten that you had to pray Asr. If it is a genuine forgetting, well then, Allah has lifted from you the sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَإِمَّا الشَّيْطَانُ If shaitan causes you to forget, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, فَإِنِّي نَسِيتُ الْحُوتَ وَمَا أَنْسَانِيهُ إِلَّا الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ أَذْكُرَ When Musa and Yusha are traveling, Yusha says to Musa, I forgot to give you that fish when the time came, and this is actually from shaitan. So one of the tactics of shaitan is to cause us to forget. A second tactic of shaitan is to see us in a sensitive situation and then to take advantage of that situation, to cause us to slip when we are in a very sensitive situation. So for example, we might be tempted to a sin, but we are trying to battle that sin. Shaitan sees that we are already in a precarious situation and Shaitan will push us over the edge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in a number of verses, for example, about our father Adam. Shaitan caused them to slip. This was a weakness that Adam felt that the angels are living forever. Ever. I'm not living forever. Remember, he's the first human, obviously, right? He knows there's something different about him and the angels. And shaitan caused him to slip. In another verse, That shaitan caused them to trip up because of what they have done. In a third verse, Allah mentions somebody whom he blessed with knowledge. But then, unfortunately, that knowledge caused him to be arrogant. And so, When that person turned away from knowledge, shaitan followed him him right then and there. When shaitan saw the opportunity, when the man fell into some weakness, فَأَتْبَعَهُ shaitan. Shaitan literally preyed on him. So we have here now to be extra careful when we are weak, when we are close to something that we shouldn't be doing. Shaitan is monitoring and shaitan will push us over the edge. Shaitan will cause us to slip. A third tactic of shaitan is to use anger against us. He's going to rile up. He sees a little bit of anger and shaitan will pour some kerosene, some oil, some fuel. Shaitan will make the anger even more. The anger might be a little bit legitimate, but shaitan knows that when we are angry, we don't think rationally. And when we don't think rationally, we do things we're going to regret. And so in the Quran, we have, for example, the famous story of Musa alayhi salam, that when Musa became angry when somebody taunted him, فَوَكَزَهُ مُوسَى فَقَضَى عَلَيْهِ Musa became so angry, he punched the Egyptian and and killed him. Musa said, this is from the doing of shaitan. Shaitan caused me to become so angry. I lost track of what I'm doing and I just punched the person. And the Prophet wasallam said, Al-ghadabu min shaitan Anger comes from shaitan. So to feel this quick sense of anger, to become so frustrated at somebody that you just want to do something immediately. This is a tactic of shaitan. And this is especially true with our friends, with our family, especially with our spouse. Houses, right? We do something in anger that we regret for the rest of our lives. A fourth tactic of shaitan, different ways of implanting his idea into us. The most common we call it is waswasa, as you know, but the Quran has a number of different terms. Each one of them is slightly different. Of them is nazagha. When the nazgha of shaitan comes, and Yusuf says, that after shaitan, nazagha between me and my brothers. And Allah says, so nazagha is a type of waswasa, but it is a very specific type of waswasa. Nazagha is to create doubt in your heart against your brother, to create some type of animosity against your brother. So there is a special waswasa that is meant to create su'avan, to create hostility, breaking the ties between you and your brother. This is called nazagha. Another you know is waswasa. فَوَسْوَسَ لَهُمَ الشَّيْطَانِ And waswasa to implant the idea via wisdom whispering into the soul. It's not a whispering the ear hears. It is a whispering of the soul. Our ears cannot hear it. Our soul hears it. Another way is to throw into our hearts. So Allah says in the Quran, فَيَنْسَخُ اللَّهُ مَا يُلْقِ الشَّيْطَانِ So Allah will get rid of what shaitan has thrown in, flung in, cast in. Yet another way is to feel something. إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفُ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا When Massa of shaitan comes, shaitan touches them. So all of these are ways that shaitan uses to get 
get his ideas into us. They're all the same concept, but each one is slightly different than the other. So this is another tactic of shaitan. And how do we know when a thought comes from shaitan versus when a thought comes from our natural desires? Al-Ghazali says that when this desire, when this thought, when this fleeting notion shocks you, like where did this come from? Then this is something that you know comes from shaitan. When you yourself don't know, why am I thinking like this? Why did this evil thought come of doing this evil deed? That's not me. Know that your own shock is a sign. It's not you. It is from shaitan. And this should give you courage that you know what? This is not me. This is shaitan's waswasa coming in. The fifth tactic of shaitan, very scary one, is that shaitan causes us to go bit by bit. Shaitan causes us to go step by step. You don't just jump into a major sin. May Allah protect us all like zina, like yani shurb al-khamr. It's sometimes possible somebody goes directly in. But generally speaking, what happens? A little bit of looking of the eye, and then flirtation, and then exchanging of phone numbers, and then talk. Look what's happening. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, O you who believe, لا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان. Don't follow the bit by bit khutuwat, yani walking bit by bit. Shaitan's not going to take you from point A to point B miraculously. You're gonna have to go step by step. Oh, you're not doing zina, you're just exchanging phone numbers. Oh, you're not drinking alcohol, you're just walking to the pub with your friend. Shaitan is gonna push you a little bit forward. When you get there, a little bit more. When you get there, a little bit more. Until finally you're like, how did I end up here? Well, because la tattabi'u khutuwat shaitan. You followed bit by bit where shaitan is leading you. Point number six, promising shaitan. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعَدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُ Allah gave you promises and I gave you promises. But the promises of Allah are true and my promises were complete lies. Shaitan's promising them, Shaitan's enticing them, but all of the promises of Shaitan are false. So Shaitan will come and promise you something that, oh, if you do this, then you're going to find so much pleasure. If you don't give sadaqah, your money will be safe in your pocket and you're going to be rich. This is a false promise of Shaitan. So Shaitan promises you something. He promises our father Adam. What did he promise our father Adam? Waqasamahuma. He's giving qasam. His promise was more than just I promise you. Waqasamahuma. Inni lakum alamin al nasihin. That Shaitan gave them a severe oath. I'm promising you that I am your sincere friend and I'm advising you if you eat from the tree, then you will live forever. Tactic number seven making us scared. Fear is also a tactic when the fear is used to not do a good deed. So there's natural fear and then there's shaitanic fear. Natural fear, you understand. It. There's a threat, there's a robber coming or something. It's a natural fear, it's okay. And it's not haram or shirk to feel it, no doubt. Iman will help you, but in and of itself, it is natural. You're going to fear that fear. But when your fear causes you to not commit a good deed, when your fear immobilizes you in this regard, then it becomes shaitanic fear. This is shaitan making his allies scared. And of course, the Quranic verse here is about the battle. When you have to fight the enemy, you know, you're in the battle of Badr, the battle of Uhud, the battle of Khandaq, you can't just be scared. You have to be courageous for the sake of Allah. If you battle, if you overcome it, Alhamdulillah, that's the essence of Iman. Tactic eight, to beautify, to make something alluring more than it is, to tempt more than what it actually is worthy to be tempted. And this is of course, تَزِينُ shaytan وَإِذْ زَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ And to our own father and mother, وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ That shaytan beautified, shaytan made it look better than it's supposed to be. And this is the reality of every sin. Before we commit it, shaytan makes us think it's much better than it actually is. In fact, in a hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said that when a woman exits the house, the men are seeing her, استخرفها الشيطان. Shaitan makes her look more beautiful than she actually is. The Prophet is warning us that don't fall for this tactic of shaitan. Tactic number nine, distracting and causing confusion, causing chaos. So you become overwhelmed and you don't think rationally. Allah mentions in the Quran, Should we invoke other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which cannot benefit us or harm us and turn back to kufr after Allah has guided us? If we do so, we will be like those confused by shaitan. And Allah mentions about riba, 
الذين يأكلون الربا لا يقومون إلا كما يقوم الذي يتخبطه الشيطان من المس. The one who is eating riba and consuming interest on the day of judgment, he will stand up in the same manner that the one whom shaitan has caused to go crazy in this world. Some scholars say this is an actual technique of shaitan that we can diagnose in the sense of somebody who has extreme OCD, somebody who has extreme like waswasa to the point of not acting normally. Sometimes it is biological and sometimes it is shaitanic, right? If it's biological, you have to go to the doctor, get medicine and whatnot. And maybe sometimes there is no cure. Sometimes it is shaitan that causes what we would call genuine madness or genuine schizophrenia or genuine OCD. It's not coming from a biological imbalance. It is coming from shaitan. And generally this is related to sihr, but not all the time. Sometimes it's not sihr. So the Quran has references that sometimes shaitan causes confusion to the point of madness in your life. And when this happens, once again, the pen is lifted and there's no sin on you because you don't control it. But khair, you have to do ruqya and fight it. And the final point that we will mention is one of the tactics of shaitan is to speak about Islam without knowledge or to follow people who are speaking about Islam and they have no knowledge. So preachers who are not worthy to preach or you yourself think something about Allah and His Messenger and you're not qualified to have an opinion. You should not be giving fatwas. You should not be interpreting without solid tools. And Allah says this is a tactic of shaitan to cause you to be so arrogant you think you know and you are not qualified to know. So you will follow your desires thinking that you're justifying it in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah mentions in the Quran that Shaitan is commanding you to commit sins. Shaitan is commanding you to commit lewd deeds. And Shaitan is commanding you to speak about Allah things which you should not say and know. You don't know this. This is explicitly a tactic of Shaitan. Allah mentions in the Quran, there are people, they're arguing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're arguing about theology, they're arguing about something that is a very important topic. And they have no ilm to argue. They're not supposed to be arguing. And so what is happening? They're actually following shaitan in this regard. So we have to be extremely careful. These are 10 tactics of shaitan. How do we fight them? Very quickly. Ikhlas, dua, dhikr, Quran, praying to Allah. Isti'adha. Allah says, وَإِمَّا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ Constantly saying, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Saying Bismillah before we do something. Constantly being of those who do dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being aware of the tactics of shaitan. One of the ways we fight shaitan to know these 10 tactics so that we don't fall for them. Remember brothers and sisters, Allah says in the Quran, Inna kayda shaytani kana ba'ifa. All of these tactics of shaitan are very, very weak. Know the tactics. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you are sincere, these tactics inshallah will not affect you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from shaitan. May Allah protect us in this world and the akhirah.